Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Razan Pereira. The government is looking at the possibility of extending the popular merchandise export from India scheme and other export incentives challenged by the US at the World Trade Organization beyond March 31st as it is worried that replacing the existing schemes could hurt exports. The foreign trade policy 2020-2025 uh, to be announced in the new fiscal may continue many of the old schemes with some adjustment in rates according to a business line report. With exports showing a decline so far this year, there is a growing feeling amongst policy makers that the boat should not be rocked further. India's exports declined almost 2% to $239.29 billion in April-December 2019, with most labour-intensive sectors contracting. Once growing at over 20%, powering India's economic growth, India's exports have been stuck at around $300 billion for the last one decade. Indian industry has often played safe, content with the domestic demand and unwilling to upgrade technology or standards to match global levels. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will take a closer look at the export sector and analyse what to expect from the budget. Joining me on the programme today are Deepshika Sikarwar, Senior Editor of The Economic Times, SK Jindal, Chairman, Investment and Capital Markets, SASOCHAM, and Ajay Dua, former Secretary, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Mr Jindal, let me begin the programme with you. As far as exports are concerned, what is it that has ensured that our exports have not grown the way we would have liked to see them grow? Uh, you are absolutely right. But the, the thing is that when you look at the larger picture in the country, the whole economy is not stable. Export figures itself also, you will see big fall or increase year after year when we see the growth or decline on the previous year, pre previous year figures. So what we need to do is work hard on this because this is a very, very important aspect of economy. No country has ever done big without doing big on the export side. So on domestic front, if you are only looking after the domestic front alone, it doesn't work so well. For India, it must and there is, it is inevitable that you should look after your exports in a way that it is best suited for our country and we have growth year after year. The figures are so surprising that any year it can be 30% down, any year it can be 18% up like that. So we need to work very, very hard. We have to increase manufacturing in the country to a greater extent and to like earlier we were thinking in terms of cheap labor and all. All those things have also been lost in the recent past because of this Bangladesh garment thing, they have taken over our exports which were working very well because of the cheap labour we had. So now we need to think in real terms of modernization, upgradation, innovation, all these things needs to be looked into, worked with a hard, with a hard discipline and hard work is required to sustain stability in exports. Okay. We need stability in exports is what you are suggesting. What needs to be done, Deepshika Sikarwa, so as to ensure that we get this kind of stability in exports. So, see Frank, there are a number of things which have sort of played on the export story, if you see. Uh, till 2008, uh, the Indian export sector was getting a lot of help from the global economy, which was booming. After 2008, the global economy has been wobbly. So, Obviously, it impacted the domestic exports. But even when the do global economy showed some signs of improvement, Indian export sector did not gain that much. Now, there are multiple issues that plague the sector. A, our transaction costs are very high. There are logistic issues. Then, our currency itself makes our exports incompetitive. You know, we have a very strong currency. And other countries have incentivized their export sector tremendously with tax incentives, with uh, power uh, incentives. As also, if you look at some countries also, you know, have this uh, currency, uh, they depreciate their currency, which has helped their exports. And also, we've not been able to achieve the scales in manufacturing sector. 
the large scales which are required you know which uh, which would bring down our cost of production and so on so we need a holistic policy now for export sector as in a stable like mr jindal said we need stability uh, agriculture we could have sort of encourage export we keep changing the policy one day we will allow an export to happen other day we'll put a ban on the export sector so a we need to start looking at the cost of carrying out exports for the export sector how we can bring down the cost how we can make it easy for them to carry out exports also there needs to be a bit of aggressiveness more aggressiveness on part of industry as also help from the government side the support from the government side that we identify markets and we actually encourage industry to go out and tap those markets like other countries do and we should incentivize them to do it in terms of taxation also uh, we have limited fiscal space to give benefits but we need to look at other forms of incentives uh, for the sector okay all right uh, a couple of points that i'd like to take uh, forward uh, with you mr dua you know one of course talking about how we've not been competitive enough as far as our manufacturing is concerned and hence it has impacted our exports have we lost an opportunity to a country like a bangladesh and say for a vietnam because we were the leader as far as textiles were concerned but now we are languishing and we are you know they have gone ahead of us so has an opportunity been lost as well let me take up the second point which you talked about specifically about garments and clothing items certainly this was, this was a, we we were the leaders in this but ever since bangladesh in particular and subsequently vietnam for some time they were treated at least developed developed countries these ldc status of theirs gave them advantages of market access with almost zero tariffs in certain parts of the world particularly in europe and in the american continent that kept up their exports of garments as well as leather goods having said that now let's look at what has come in the way of india i would say one question uh, ours being no longer eligible for ldc benefits second and i would consider that as a major disadvantage the flexibility in employment of labor which is available in bangladesh as well as in vietnam we do not have it and this is at a time when the real wages if you compare in terms of purchasing power proper purchasing parity is much lower in bangladesh and vietnam than here yeah. even then the work the the regulatory system or the framework allows them to hire and fire there was a very recently a few months ago threats of strikes in bangladesh in this garment sector with respect to uh, the low wages which were being paid and guess who where did the government go government sided with the employers help them out vis a vis they are continuing the policy rather than going with the trade unions or their workers vietnam i think vietnam is actually a real challenge for us because it's combining not only diligence of a very high order plus the wage advantage but also ability to design and ability to kind of market itself very aggressively compared to even bangladesh going forward i see bangladesh uh, vietnam as a competitor for us not merely in textiles garments but also in a whole lot of manufacturing products right the now you raised earlier the question or question about where are we going heading in exports what about our competitiveness absolutely we used to be competitive in labor intensive items for reasons just mentioned we are losing out there of which i will flag uh labor flexibility of hiring and firing as one very leading cause second is our 
inability to achieve the scales the sc volumes of production actually help you to cut costs we have not i don't think anywhere we been having achieving that the moment a person crosses a particular threshold limit he sets up another unit in order to remain a small or a medium enterprise or a micro enterprise rather than expand and get the advantages of scale uh, the rest of the issues which have been impacting our exports deep deep shikas very elaborately mentioned them be it our currency be it the incentives of transaction and logistics if, right if our average cost is 14% in logistics and our competitors is 5 or 6 you see the disadvantage hmm. clear cut there hmm. Hmm. so we have to be work and then of course i would say our interest rates hmm. make be it with respect to working capital or term capital make us much costlier than elsewhere in the world right okay taking the discussion forward now mr jinder at some level do you believe that the industry is also to blame because of the lack of the go getter kind of attitude that we require as far as exports are concerned because the industry has relatively been safe content with catering or playing to the domestic markets no i will say the ecosystem as a whole is not really very robust and very serious it needs when you are uh, talking about your business one has to be serious nowadays only fittest can survive so international markets will not let you survive if you are not doing according to what is required you see systems needs to be simplified there are lot of difficulties in the system itself like refund of your duties customs tax refunds incentives gst refund all these things they cause such a havoc you may not get your refunds for one year two year and how can you handle your cash flows when such large amount of refunds are stuck with the government with no payment of interest you have to incur interest because you are paying to your bank every day so the, all these things they uh, disrupt the whole system and they tell people don't don't enter into export market not i don't think more people are coming into exports now because of so many difficulties they are facing uh, in getting their own money back gst is you have already paid and you have wanted back your money you will get it back after a year or two then also you should be thank thankful to the government that they have given it back to you so the kind this kind of situation will not have let export grow they need some help like our labor laws mr dua said and uh, our interest rates they are permanent hurdles government needs to be like they are serious about ease of doing business they should be serious about ease of doing exports also exports needs to be eased then only it can happen we are very very incompetitive in the world market which is visible from the situation that we have not been able to get the stability until now every year we see different picture it should not be like that then unfortunately now at this stage international markets are also not in favor just now so we need to do innovations we need to do research we need to do lot of things then only we can survive this is my take on export i have been active into export for last 45 years and i have seen them happening myself so i find one has to be serious about business now you cannot continue with without being serious okay all right so dipshika you know as far as uh, uh, you know ftas are concerned how important is it for us to get some of our big ftas in place maybe with europe maybe with uh, you know some other uh, groupings and uh, do you see that happening any time in the near future and how is it going to contribute and what kind of an impact is it going to have on exports i'm glad you asked this question frank because uh, one more issue where i find that industry has sort of not shown the aggressiveness that it should have shown is the ftas uh, so our imports under the most most of our ftas has grown but our exports have not really sort of benefited that much so while we are undertaking a review of you know say asean uh, fta and we are also looking at other ftas uh, there is uh, a fresh thinking you know after what happened at rcep in india sort of uh, you know decided not to sort of ink it uh, then uh, that we should look at us or we should look at eu you know 
where which are our key export markets because these are the countries you know uh, these are the groups where we want to sell our products so we should have ftas with these countries so while talks have started with you no know, with eu talks have been going on for many years but we've not sort of reached there but hopefully uh, government looks very serious this time uh, and they are very keen also that we should sort of move forward uh, in these markets so hopefully we should uh, see something but it may not happen immediately it's going to take time because these negotiations do take time okay all right so you know uh, uh, mr dua just talk to us about the importance really as far as the export sector is concerned and its contribution to the D gdp because you know when the indian economy was doing well when we all we, when we saw almost double digit growth exports were doing wonderfully well at that time as well you know over 20% and so on and so forth so what's uh, the contribution of the export sector as far as the gdp and the economy is concerned as a whole first now down to 13% hmm. if our gdp uh, is 2.7 trillion dollars our 300 or barely 300 or even less than that it doesn't you dropped it by a third second i would say you brought in a degree of uncertainty which was not there earlier at least with respect to three sectors of the economy or the one was clothing leather i am putting at one second was gems and jewelry we are a very big exporter in that sector and third was our light engineering goods i think we are lost light engineering goods included whole lot of things that space that space we have lost to the chinese gems and jewelry probably to a number of countries but also i understand that the market has somewhat shrunk for shrunk for the so called artificial i wouldn't call it artificial but the for these gems and jewelry per se because the world prosper world is not growing at that fast this, this is a discretionary spend and the with respect to we discussed about clothing others advantage of exports is one of course very clearly funding our imports and adding to the stability of the your currency we see that our imports are fairly inflexible mm. inelastic to price largely because they constitute a large amount of it is fuel crude oil and gas and now even thermal coal apart from the met coal so i'm putting clubbing that here a lot of minerals we are not a mineral rich country we may be we may be having reserves of coal yet we import 200 or million tons of thermal coal we import almost everything of which we need for, for our say all our copper requirement copper concentrate and others we import we import zinc the and of course whole lot of rare rare earths we there was a time and thank god for it i would say we moved out of importing food we used to spend our valuable money on there also but the other f continues fertilizer imports are still large so these are and of course capital goods machinery i should not uh, be ignoring because that's a large one two one we need to be cutting down on the imports if it is possible we've had respite from it for 6 or 7 years with respect to the prices of crude international prices so crude and fertilizers the burden came less but i see no reason why at those points of time also our import bill doesn't come down because we suddenly relax the rules for import of gold gold has constituted a fair amount of our import basket and now as the discussion is going on in the government the uh, the finance uh, the commerce minister has been talking about it that an item called others is 100 billion dollars worth is uh, item called uh, others and thousands of items which are for which there is no specific classification you know our i commodity code they come under that 
and they get the benefit of low tariffs. Mm. We certainly need to see whether we need them and if we need, do need them, how can we check whether tariff and non-tariff barriers can be put for specific items there. Small-scale industry in India is a very major, large exporter of various commodities which it makes. Mm. And we know that small industry is the one which creates more jobs than the formal and the large, large sector. Having said that, I would say for us, another very labor-intensive item and which we have so far joined an enjoyed an advantage is our software exports. Mm. It's highly labor intensive. We've been exporting those. And of course, now there was a time when we all thought that the Chinese don't know English, so they can't compete with us. And we would be the exporters of human software. I think that advantage is going away. So I would think the point which you earlier asked my co-panelists, FTAs are needed. Mm. Let's not we may not have joined one because we were not ready and there there is a clear fear apprehension of what china might do to us because china has greater cost competitiveness greater ag aggressiveness uh, in terms of ex exports etc we have we should be looking at it as a temporary phenomena before we actually join even rcep right during this period building up our competitiveness but the problem, new problem is that with the United States, once an ally of yours in trade, it might be still a strategic ally, etc. They are the ones who are dragging you to WTO and elsewhere by saying that your export subsidy regime is in violation of the international norms. Sure. Sure. Okay. All right. Closing comments now from all my guests with the expectations from the budget. The budget is almost upon us. What do you expect from the budget as far as the export sector is concerned, Mr. Jindal? Uh, I would expect that uh, they should be looking at a, how to provide stable policy for exports. If our own economy in the country is not doing very well, to expect export will do very well is really not realistic. They should be thinking in realistic terms. Refund of taxes, all those things are very, very important. They should not consider that exporter will export and forget about the taxes. Taxes, the quantum is 20%, 18%, 25%. He cannot survive with those kind of cash flows that he is paying taxes on his interest on his own money and he can survive. He cannot survive. So he will rather stop the export and look for domestic angle. And simplification is also very important because if they simplify, the cost gets reduced. If they don't simplify cost and ants, they should be looking at it. Simplification is very, very important. They should let loose things happen. That will create, for example, MSME, if they are, you are given, you give them some flexibility, they will be able to create a lot of jobs, which is our need. So all those things are, if we promote export, they, they have solution for many other problems for us. So we should be doing that rather than giving cash incentives or uh, losing money on that account. We should simplify the things for exporters so that they are able to do it at lesser cost of, for themselves. And to make them, them competitive in the world, now the formalities, the procedures are so complicated, not everybody can afford it. Right. Dipshika, expectations? So I do hope, you know, uh, there have been talks about, uh, you know, coming out with some sort of a scheme which will uh, allow, you know, cheaper credit uh, to exporters, not just rupee credit, but also dollar credit, uh, because exporters are going out, so they need cheaper funds to go out. Uh, also, some sort of stability where special economic zones are concerned. Now, there is a lot of uncertainty whether, you know, the scheme is going to continue, what kind of benefits will be there or not. So, it provides some sort of certainty to the special economic zone scheme. Also, the, you know, tax neutralization scheme. I mean, we, uh, we are yet to see the exact contours of what scheme is going to come out in instead of MEIS. While, you know, for textiles and apparel, MEIS has been extended. Now, there is talk that it will uh, benefit would continue for the telecom sector as well. 
but let's have clarity on the scheme uh, so hopefully the budget will sort of bring out these things you know right and mr dua close the show for us with your concluding remarks i think the budget should make a lump sum provision for pulling up the exports from the country and the trade policy which follows should be spelling out some of the details of how this budget allocation would be utilized i say this because now anything which is to be done we have to look at our, our the allegation against us which has been held uh, about mes and our subsidizing our exports which are not compliant with the wto not yet effective because the dispute panel is no longer there so if the dispute panel is not in position the order doesn't become final so we have received some respite from the wto the emphasis going forward could be creating special infrastructure which is i think wto compliant right. for exports be it fast track berths at the airport be it the uh, as as was mentioned there special logistics facilities railway wagons all priority etc which we are saying we run it for everybody is not just for exports if you are going out to mumbai or if you going to a particular port our we have a special kind of an infrastructure those things probably may not cost so much mm. as it they would may reduce the cost and offset if there if at all there is any reduction to be done with respect to the meis and other subsidies which are being questioned right okay all right then on that note we'll call it a wrap on this edition of the big picture those were the expectations from the experts as far as uh, the budget is concerned on the export sector thank you that gentlemen and lady for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us that's it from me see you again next time